My name is Claudia Alexander and I'm the project scientist for the NASA contribution to the International Rosetta mission. Tell me about the science of Rosetta. What have we learned about comets so far? So one of the most interesting measurements that we've made so far is the so-called D to H ratio, which is the heavy water uh, versus normal water relationship between inside of the comet. And we like to compare that with the heavy water to normal water relationship in the Earth. And we think that's a good benchmark for the early Earth, what its composition was like. And what we got excited about a few years ago was we made a measurement at a comet that had the exact same relationship between heavy water and normal water as Earth's oceans did. And so we said, oh, comets must have brought the ocean water. So you, so you have a dry Earth, and you have to populate a dry Earth with uh, comets that are coming in from the deep, uh, more frozen solar system. And that hydrates the Earth and brings, brings water. Uh, and we said, well, it must be that way. But when we got to Rosetta, we made the measurement. And not only does our comet not resemble uh, Earth's relationship between heavy water and normal water, but it doesn't resemble that of any other comet either. It's quite out of the ballpark. So that's, that's great, because it sends us back to the drawing board. We now are much more um, digging into, it, could Earth possibly have been wet, ha having its own water that could be squeezed out of some of those early minerals that, to bring out the oceans? Or is there another explanation? Maybe there's a combination of bringing uh, uh, water from closer in, where maybe where the asteroids are, to rehydrate a forming Earth. So we have lots of work to do to try to understand where the ocean water came from. One of the other things that was talked about a lot was this concept of comets brought building blocks of life to planet Earth. Where are we on that one? So uh, to understand whether comets have brought the building blocks of life, we still have a lot more work to do. First things first, we are taking an inventory of all the organic material. And one of the surprising uh, cool results is that there's a lot of organic material, seemingly, on the surface of the comet. And so understanding, OK, how do, how do you get that organic material? And then what happens when that organic material is released some of these are very large molecules, and they go up and they interact, or maybe they get uh, photolyzed with, this, with the ultraviolet radiation, and do particles then fall back? Is there some sort of evolution, chemical evolution, that is part of what happens, what comets bring to a planet like the Earth that is important for making a contribution to biology? So we've got a lot of work to do on that one. What do you think is, is, is the likely future as far as um, Philae is concerned? What would be the big things you'd say that we've already learned with Philae and what might the future hold? So uh, Philae has taught us um, some surprising things about the strength of the material. This is all stuff we really, really wanted to know from the comet and Philae, um, including the wonderful bounce that it took off of the surface, helps us to understand uh, not only how strong that material is, but how is it possible that material like this is so strong? So again, we're going back to the drawing board, going back to the laboratory, and looking at some really old experiments that got close to simulating what might have happened there. And you're looking back and saying, well, that was on Earth. That included Earth gravity. But maybe the physics was along the, the right line. So we're really opened up some doors in terms of making us think about what is this strange material and how does it work. What do we know about what's inside that comet? Um, so we see some very, very surprising, um, shall we say, landforms, or uh, what we call in science uh, morphology, uh, how the uh, surface kind of looks. And we see, uh, for example, what they call the goosebumps or the, uh, the dinosaur eggs, uh, a, a, a series of uh, roundish uh, grains that are really quite large. And that is, um, gives us a hint, maybe, because when people theorize, how could this material have settled out of the primordial cloud out of which all the planets in the sun formed? Would it have formed these roundish globules and clumps? And then they said, nah. And so here we have an example of, of, of terrain that is uh, 
just what you might have imagined, except much larger. Uh, so we've, we've really got uh, a surprise. Um, we're looking at these so-called boulders because you ask yourself, how does an airless body have boulders? How does the um, uh, um, erosion what kind of erosion causes that? And again, are these maybe more fundamental building blocks out of which cometary material is made? Um, do you have what we used to think of was a very, um, not very well, uh, it's not, doesn't hold together well. It's, it's touching on only a few uh, places, and so it's very porous. And we still think that the body is very porous, but trying to figure out, you know, how, what's the touching mechanism? So you're learning about what's the heat flow will tell you about how things are touching because if it's, if it's touching a lot, the heat can flow rapidly, but if it only got a few points. But the strength of the material also depends on how those points are touching and how well connected they are. So we've got a lot of really exciting fundamental data that's helping us to understand how this material works as a machine. Deep inside that comment, What's there? Is it, is it, is it, does it get harder and harder like a, like a planet does? Is there, are there big holes inside there? What do you think? I mean, um, deep inside, that's the big mystery, right? That's why we brought the concert experiment, which is kind of like an ultrasound, and it's supposed to send radio waves through and help us figure out, because if it were a planet, we would expect it to have a core, and we might expect that core to be very uh, dense with iron and maybe magnetic field uh, currents are generated that cause, you know, uh, something that could be measured outside the body. And so, uh, you know, we've got, on the other hand, the possibility that this material is just one type of material all the way through. And we really want to know the answer to that question, and we don't have that answer quite yet.